I'm so delighted to welcome all of you to Stanford and to the Stanford Global Energy Forum. Over the next two days, industry leaders, policymakers, scientists, energy experts, and problem solvers from across sectors and around the world will come together to discuss the forces that are shaping global energy systems and the implications of these dynamics over the coming decades. Over 20 years now, Stanford has established a very powerful ecosystem to tackle energy transition problem. Our industry members are critical to us. <laughs> For the ground transportation, is that a done deal? That's lithium ion batteries. Uh, is that a done deal? I think if you just look at the trends, some countries in Europe where nearly all, all vehicles sold, if not all vehicles sold, are electric. Even in California, where we're, I think, over 10% vehicles sold, uh, we're electric. It seems like it's a done deal to me, I guess. It is a false narrative that we have to choose between combating global climate change, uh, affordability, or American energy security. Uh, the United States of America uh, is a superpower with abundant, <clears throat> abundant natural resources and the hardest workers in the world. So I believe that, that we should be leading the world through innovation, not elimination. This piece of legislation, these two we've done, the bipartisan infrastructure and the inflation reduction, it gives the world hope that America will still be the innovative and creators that's needed to save the planet as we have it. This forum has rejuvenated my passion for energy, I've come to find. I think it's good to hear the bigger picture and to be like, oh yeah, I'm glad I chose this field. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I am looking forward to making even more connections, I'm getting people to invest in the business as we are growing and hopefully doing this again next year. I think it's fantastic. We have been waiting for this for you know four years. The last time was in 2018 to convene a gathering of global uh, thought leaders and you know we'll also identify what the challenges are. This is not going to be easy. This is going to be hard work to transition the world towards a cleaner economy. So yeah, that's what we're here for. I now think of energy security as somewhat broader than just do I have reliable supply to do the things that I need to do for my economy and for my, uh, my, my uh, citizens. I think of it also as can I also, mm -hmm. in a secure way, protect the environment. Crises creates opportunity. And in Ukraine, as you can imagine, this is not some abstract thing down the road. They're literally having to think, how do we get to next spring using what we call alternative forms of energy? Uh, and and they're, they're doing really creative things. Is there anything that gives you hope? Um, you, you see some hopes, hopeful signs that we can, uh, can take with us? Oh, I'm a huge optimist. I, I believe that we can solve these kinds of problems, provided we can keep our own democracy functioning. That's a, that we don't have, I, the clock's at 20 seconds. We don't have the time to tackle that. That's what worries me the most. Every day when I see our students, uh, this is the most public-minded generation I've taught. And uh, they do want to change the world. Uh, they're in a little, they're in a hurry, and we have to say sometimes, okay, you have to kind of know something before you can change the world. Uh, but um, th this, it's, it's not as if uh, people don't care. And it's not as if the next generation doesn't care. And so that makes me tremendously optimistic too. Why do any of the brilliant young scientists, engineers, business people that come out of this institution, why should they come to or want to work at ExxonMobil. I think you know we are going to play a leadership role here. I think if you're interested in moving the needle on a world scale, there are very few companies who can contribute to that. I wouldn't suggest that we can do it on our own, but I do think that we have uh, the history, the relationships, the technology, the capabilities uh, to actually make a meaningful contribution in this space. You know, we need to start stop arguing about which. You know what's right, what's wrong, or you know what's left, what's right. I just think uh, the, the reality is uh, we need to get aligned on solving the problem, which is reducing emissions. But I think what really stands out is there's just, uh, and, and a lot of the speakers have talked about it, is just increased momentum. Things are really starting to happen, and I think a lot more hope than I think in the past. The addition of, of Stanford's involvement in the in climate change, particularly around the technological innovation, along with the cross-section of, of leadership and decision makers, has been really great for this conference. Okay.